behave. Now last week we spent a lot of time getting the build working and we didn't get it all the way, the build all the way working last time and I've pushed it a lot further. But I haven't gotten quite as far as actually uh, linking the code. Uh, I got, it, I got it as far as starting the link process and failing, and then it was time to go eat dinner. So, and I don't, I don't like to miss the dinner table. So, all right. So where we are, we have an undefined reference to memcopy. That would be something that's part of the standard library. Uh, if you are doing host-based development or just developing for the same machine that you're working on. That would be provided by libc. Here that's going to be provided by an alternative library. And I'm almost certainly, almost guessing that that's going to be new lib. That's usually what it is in these situations. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark here and see about adding that to my link flags. See if that gives us a build. Don't know if it will or not, but it's worth a shot. There we go. Well, that did not get me what I wanted. It did not link us to memcopy. And I need to scroll back up here and see what's going on. Yeah, it's got an undefined reference to all right, we need verbose output here. Well, that didn't get me what I wanted. Let's just try this. There we go. That got me a lot closer to what I wanted, I think. Either that or else it ignored me. That's always one of the options. Nope, there we go. There's our command. All right, there's everything we gave it. I don't see. I don't see your switches there. No, I think I'm not looking at the right thing. All right, and it occurs to me it would be really great to uh, open up the chat window tonight, too. Always good to see if anybody watching has questions for us. So let me just go do that. And folks, if you do have questions about anything related to embedded development, go ahead and just drop them in the chat. We will mo we're more than happy to pick so those up. Let me just go do that. Pick those questions up and answer them for you. And of course, I never remember how to use the tools on Twitch because that would imply that I had a clue what was going on. Not my scene. All right, anybody. Anyway, if you do happen to have questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat, and we'll try to answer them as we go. I do see there's a couple of you out there. All right, now I'm looking back here in my text, and I'm trying to find my new lib. getting a lot of uh oh, i see your dogs have come to visit there butch they did <laughs> i imagine my cat will be making an appearance soon he was going off to hunt through my workshop he usually comes out of there and howls at me a little bit these are not our link flags all right so that's a thing to know our link flags are not making it down there yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff up here that would have been present. Well, so you, you set that you set that link flags variable. Then how does it get into them? 
Ah, uh, you you Man. found you found the problem in my in, in my cunning plan. Um, <laughs> I was looking at that. I was like, wait, that's not a standard variable. <laughs> that will that will not get what we want. So I have to find the right spot in here to put it. A oh, all right. Okay, so in here we're going to have to add, uh, we've created our executable, our ELF file. And we're going to have to add our linking options now. So this is one of those places where we're going to go and visit the handy dandy web browser, which uh, interestingly I didn't have open even though I had it open earlier. So. So Google is our friend. Target link options, there we go. Look at that, we put up target link options. And we have to give it the name of the target, which we have as a variable. And we have to say if this is public or private. And of course it's private, or public. I don't, I don't know of a good use for the private situation. So let me just bring that back up to the foreground there. And we will add our linking options. So target link options, target name, let's start in that variable ELF file. Link flags is what we have. I'm not sure in the long term that that's really what we want to do, but that's what we're doing at the moment. Because I think we want a mix of link options and we want to link library, uh, link libraries, which is separate. Link libraries. And we want libm and new lib. That wasn't helpful. All right. Now it's getting way <laughs> too helpful for my like. <laughs> Our, our smart editors are nice, but sometimes they get a little, There's a days. little too. Yeah. There's days I want a dumb editor. Yeah. So, folks, just before we went on air, we were having a little trouble doing our remote share uh, with uh, VS Code here. And I talked about switching to uh, a tool called Teammate, which is shared screens uh, over SSH. And... It might not be pretty, but it sure is effective. <laughs> it just about happened, and right now I'm almost wondering if we didn't want that. All right, so that didn't go over very well. Dog freeze. That could have gone better. He's clued in. All right, target link caps are called with invalid parameters. Oh, 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 oh. And that's because... You know, I talked about you have to save whether it's public or private, then I didn't do it. I don't know if I have to do that for the libraries as well. Nope. Okay, and can I open linker file NRF52840 GCC LD? No file or directory. Okay. Nice. That's actually not unsurprising, though, because we didn't tell it. Uh... There's a lot of stuff in here that's actually kind of nonsense. Like this map file, that's not what we want. We want our map file. Oh, we didn't even set our map file. Uh, let's set a map file down here.
great. And you know what? I actually don't like this as a variable up here. We're never going to use it that way. So why don't we just put that down here? And then we'll change this out for. The map file variable. Take that out. And I need to fix the indent on this or it's going to give me. Won't cause any problem with the compiler, but it'll drive me nuts looking at it. Get particular about that kind of thing. And this link file is not a proper link file. So we're going to have to fix that. And our proper link file lives up here. And if I'm being honest, I don't remember where it lives up there. Uh, but there's examples here, and they led me to where the link file lives. So I have to be down here in config. Oh, yeah, RMGCC. Look at that. Right there, that's the link file. Okay, that's great. We know where that lives. So you're still in VS Code, right? Yeah, I'm still in VS Code. If you, if you right click on that and get relative path, it'll copy it up there for you and you can just. Will it? Boy, that's going to save me yep. a lot of typing that I don't want to do. All right, I lost it already. I feel special about that. Copy relative path. Look at that. All right, now this first part here. Corresponds to a path that I have or a variable that I have defined. I haven't defined it in here and that's an issue that I want to address. So I defined that kind of thing up here. In the root CMake, it doesn't really belong there is the problem. Those are very specific to the platform we're developing for. So it really that really belongs in here. So I'm gonna do that. Take that link library link flags out of there from here. Don't need that anymore. All right. Very nice that the marketplace has extensions that can help with LD files. I have bigger fish to fry at the moment. All right, so that didn't go over as well as I might have liked. Ah, there's an NRF common.ld that we need. That will find up here again. Find the folder. Look at that NRF common LD, it even knew. knew I would be after it. Okay, and there's a collection of those. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. That's mostly, where all the includes. Yeah, mostly a thing saying, please include this. All right, that's great. Well, that's... Okay, so that that really didn't work out quite the way we wanted that to. Uh, so, this is under... under under files to include, if you change that just to the name of the file, it'll. And then something, something that you would expect to be in there. Well, not in the. Uh, I really don't know what I'll find in there, but there's another tool that's worth, worth using. Yeah. Here. And this is the Unix find command. So we tell it where to start, find that uh, one directory up, then external, then the name nrf underscore common dot ld. Look at that, there we have it. So it's in modules nrf, of course, of course that was an obvious name, why didn't I think of that? Uh, boy, I don't even know if I know how to tell it to look in that spot. 
thought, thought you had it there in your you got modules in RFX, right? And MDK, or that was one of your other ones there. Yep. Line so 28. I, so I do. So I got to say that's where to look for linkable modules too. So that, well, let me copy that path instead of going past it. And down here when I'm giving link options. Tell it to look for modules there. That yeah, might get us by. I don't know if that will or not. No, I can't find new lib now. That's that's fair. <laughs> I don't know if new lib's actually here. And we put that there looking for mem copy. So um... and string length. Okay, so that's not here, so we're going to need to figure out where that comes from. Um, you know, this is one of those cases where we can go back and see what Arduino did. Uh -huh. So why don't we do that, and I'm going to bring that up, and I will switch us over to a full desktop view. We could probably also switch it over to what they're doing or when we built their example they had to be linking against something all right so we're we're building it again for our device if you were with us last week, you saw this window come up a lot. Now, you would think, looking at how much setting up the build I'm still doing, that I didn't do anything to, to work on this. But I assure you, I actually spent a couple hours on this. <laughs> and for those of you who are looking to to get into this, this is kind of the norm when setting up this stuff for a new device. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, but the good news is you only have to do it once for each chip type that you're working with. If I build with another NRF52, I won't have to do this. All right. That looks like... That looks like a link command right there. Yep, that's a link command um, that I've just highlighted there. Gonna have to go out and see what they're linking against. And we copied all of this stuff in, but obviously we left some stuff out. We didn't leave huh. this out. They linked, they linked that stuff into their Arduino core. Okay. I think that's what they did. Kind of looks like it. That was really not the answer I wanted. Or they just include the functions that they need in their Arduino core. That's a possibility, too. There is nothing saying you have to use a standard libc library. <laughs> Hey, they built an RTOS into it, into that core. Not, not relevant to what we're up to now, but yeah, there's free RTOS all over the place. Oh, and there it is. CMSIS, I think, provides its own uh, standard library. All right. So then what are our options for all right, so getting some stuff in there. Yeah, so we're gonna have to uh, 
we're going to have to take an alternative route, but a well-traveled one. We know that we can build a Blink program to go on this device because we did it in one of our earlier episodes. We, we actually did it and uh, burned a Blink program to the device using the same SDK. So we know for certain that we have uh, the right tools here to do that. And unfortunately, it doesn't mean we're going to have to dig around a little bit and figure out where that's all hiding. I don't think is, so. Is there any of that stuff under components or under them? Yeah, it's a good place to look. Stuff about boards, libraries. Boy, that looks promising. <laughs> it looks like a lot of libraries. All right, these are just it's like all the libraries. it's like all the code for them, though. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually good. That's to the good. Here's our tool chain. That could be relevant. file that's the that's our POSIX make file there's nothing in there about libraries yeah. this is our standard library there is CMSIS right above that though yeah and I want to stick my nose in that in the middle minute this might have our linker stuff in it I'd like to think CMSIS has it, but uh, they use this make they use their make files to make a pretty make. They went the, the long way around to accomplish what CMake would have done for them for free. He doesn't like looking through make files either. She doesn't. Can hardly can hardly fault her for that. Except, except in this case, it is that it's eight thirty, and that means it's half an hour to bedtime, and she's starting to complain that we're not getting ready for bed yet. <laughs> the dog is guilting you into going to bed. <laughs> I she's she's it. a she's a she's an early to bed kind of critter. See, after dinner, my cats just give it up and they're like, "Yeah, we're going to bed." All right, hey, look at that. CMSIS has is full of stuff. So we've got those are math libraries. Those are math libraries. Well, isn't that exciting? So we may have to do... <laughs> See, it's funny when it's somebody else's at the animal. Day. <laughs> it's less funny when it's my cat hopping up on stuff. Fortunately, our two big dogs are not much about hopping up on things. but <laughs> That's good. That's good. So I was working on this before, and I was trying to reconfigure my audio and video setup a little bit, and my cat decided she had to be in the middle of it. She was trying to tell you how to fix it. Yeah, I picked her up and set her on the floor, and I might have said some harsh words to her. She resented it and sulked in the corner for 20 minutes. <laughs> I did not like to be spoken too harshly. All right, so, yeah, I think... I think the thing to do here is just try to do the build with the make files that they gave us. And I think if I go into here, I kept the make file around, so. Let's see what's in there. That's a make file I copied. Well, you know, if I'd have been a smarter monkey, I would have just copied all that stuff right down into the 
Guess he didn't copy all that stuff in, into his. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's things. There is mem object and. Yeah, I'll bet what I'm looking at there is all of my missing definitions. Yep. All right, let's try this and see what happens. Uh, I get told to not do that. Okay. Oh, you know what? I copied this out of the example folder. So let's just go up into that example folder. And is it, this came out of, I want to say components. Oh, there's not a components folder, so that isn't right. Peripheral. We have to switch to this folder that's for our board. And I think the nearest equivalent to our board is the PCA 10056. And the ARM GCC folder. Now let's try this. I don't feel like this is the right folder, but oh yeah, All right. Their make file worked on exactly one machine. Oh. It worked on the machine this was built on. You had to have the exact same version as the compiler did. I remember this. I don't remember how I got around this. I know we built this though software. But also, I suspect I'm not in the right location. Huh. <laughs> Welcome to the exciting world of embedded development, folks, where the vendors ship. I know. They worked on their machine, but it may never work on another machine in the life of the product. This isn't the first vendor supplied build system that I've run into the, with this. You know, we had we <clears throat> we had extra to the challenge by only working on this a couple of hours a week. So yeah, that's not some of our go better. <laughs> <laughs> some of our memory of what we might have done to to get around a thing uh, gets lost in there somewhere. All right, so lots of calls to it. Lots of calls to it. Well, a clever monkey would actually know which ones to. Um. There was some interesting stuff in there. But yeah, lots of, lots of this. Here's a shock. Lots of stuff copies memory. I was trying to remember what its signature was. If you could add more stuff on the grep line to to try to get to a, a definition instead of a invocation. Yeah. Um, Is it return void pointer? Yeah, it's got. No, it doesn't. It's a void. I'll tell you what. Here's the quick way to figure that out. Yeah, returns a void pointer. Yep. It does the it does the copy and then it tells you it tells you gives you the address of the location where it copied it. Yeah. Which is a thing that most people don't make use of, but it is available. Yep. The situations where you'd have to make use of that aren't that common, but they do exist. Well, you get a null back if the copy failed too. Right. 
that didn't get what I wanted it to. So, so because star is a is a is a grip thing, you'll need to escape it. Like that. Yep. And then I also need to say that I don't really care how many white spaces, how many spaces there are. Yeah. Um, on either on either side of it. See if that that works. If I remember right, that says give yeah. me one or more white space characters. Yep. <laughs> Not defined in there. All right. Uh, so we're expected to have our own new lib defined somewhere. So so there could be a space on the left side of that oh, asterisk too. You're right. You're right. And there could be zero or more there, so you want to put a star there, yeah. That's true over here as well. Yes. Nope. Still not. Still not. Yeah. Well, that's hmm. exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Now y'all know what we do so, with day jobs. So we could we could take away some of the ambiguity of the um, prints and things by just putting void dot star mem copy. I like that. It goes really fast, so it's not it's worth at least worth a try, right? Hey, hey there we you go. Get a lot of stuff back. So some of that's casting, but some of the stuff that came out the first one. Oh man. <laughs> that wasn't the answer I wanted at all. No. It was a good try though. It was, but I think it confirms our earlier Yeah, that confirms our earlier answer. They do not supply that function and we are on our own to supply it. Which That means... is awesome. Yes. Yes it is. Which means that there is a new lib that uh, needs to be installed. Well, I thought I installed that. That doesn't mean I did. That I actually did. Uh, oh, and of course, I don't have my operating systems package manager here. Uh, tell you what, we need to do a little bit of research here. Because I don't remember how to install new lib or what it looks like. So what's new lib for an ARM Cortex floor for? Well, here we go. We've got... Uh, I guess we can get it straight from the source. This is ARM. All right, so there's new lib. Let's go take a look and see what new lib is. Of course, this is a Red Hat looking site. I'll tell you what, let's just get crazy here. I'm running Ubuntu. We're gonna use the power of the, the Google. They have new libs out there. That's not bad. <laughs> By the way, I have an Android phone, and when I did, which I'm using to monitor the Twitch stream, and when I did that, it fired up my assistant <laughs> by using, using the power of. <laughs> All right, this is the package I want here: lib new lib arm none eabi. Cool. So let's just go install that. Let me take us back to the uh, our world of code. Well, I'm going to copy that. Copy paste does not work well into this terminal. So I have 
can make some off-screen adjustments here. So lib new lib dash arm dash none dash e a b i. Take a quick look. Nothing else requires that. There's nothing else required there. So let's see what that gets us. Nobody look at my super secret password there. All right. Apparently. No, I already had it. Okay. So where's it hiding then? <laughs> you know what? Uh, it could be that when I specified that name in the toolchain file, the library. Yeah. I need to specify the whole thing. Ah. Well, that didn't get very far. All right, so we don't have the path down, right? So, um, so we're going to use our friend find again. Well, that wasn't the answer I wanted at all. User lib. Okay, I feel better about that. All right, so that's pretty easy. We actually, the only thing we really need to do is add this to our linker path right there. So that's easy. Nice. Now, who knows what else is going to blow up when I do this? Hey, one, one, one problem at a time, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm worried there's a whole bunch of other libraries I haven't included, but. The compiler and linker will tell us. Yes. <laughs> one of the one of the lovely things about working with C is that the, uh, the tools tell you at length what you've done wrong. <laughs> and I've, I've been playing with uh, C++ 20 for fiddling around with the advent of code, which is the awesome thing that anybody wants to experiment with coding puzzles to get some is to go to adventofcode.com and have some fun. But the uh, C++ 20 spews out an enormous number of <laughs> warnings and error messages for every little error because it's all super hyper templatized with new concepts and other things like that going on. That sounds about right. All right, no love there. Let's see what it gave us for our flags, though. All right. All right. It occurs to me I should go see what's actually in that user new lib. Yeah, new lib's a directory, so let's see what's in new lib. Oh, yeah, okay. So it turns out that new lib is part of the path and is not itself the library. In fact, it's just a libc down there. That's great. There's a libc right there. That's what we want. Cool. We might want this libc nano. I don't know, but let's just try the libc and see what that gets us. We weren't looking to build such, so big a program that it was really going to make a big difference anyway. Right, and now down here we don't do new lib, we just do C. I love those one letter library names. Yeah, it does keep everything simple, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> That's one way to put it. It's all simple until you got to figure out what it is. <laughs> all right, so that didn't get us everything we wanted, but well, let's scroll back and see. This is a new set of errors. It is. Yeah, I don't 
think it plays well with full standard library. I don't think I've ever seen that message about uses VFP register arguments. Yeah, that's kind of special. I wonder if, oh, in fact, it's actually trying to link libc nano. Apparently that's a uh, uses VPF register arguments. Now libc does not use VPF register arguments. Yeah, it just kind of keeps going on that way. I think it's it's got strong feelings about that. Just wanted to make sure you pay attention to that one. Yep. See earlier comments about your tools will tell you what length that you have done wrong. Uh, we're getting link path problems too. It can't find our reset handler. And I'm pretty sure that that is not the reset handler. That number is just pretty small to be the reset handler. It's curious that it has a default value that it would use though, instead of just giving up. It does. Well, there are some common standards that a lot of ARM processors use. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, they aren't universal. It's ARM. You can do absolutely anything you want to the silly thing. But there are a couple of really common memory starting points. And if you get those wrong, your uh, upload tool will tell you at length what you did wrong because the chip itself won't let you write to, you know, you're going to say the address starts at a certain value at 80,000 or 8,000. and The chip is going to say, uh, that's not memory you're allowed to write to and stop trying to write there. Which is kind of a nice thing for it to do because, mm -hmm. you know, bad things can happen. Yeah. At least yeah. It's not like unreversible, unreversible bad things can happen. Yep. Yeah, usually it's you're trying to write to memory that doesn't doesn't correspond to writable flash memory because they just on the chips they just build in an address that at least my understanding of it a certain address specifies you know this block is actually corresponds to the uh, the writable flash memory. Mm -hmm. All right, now, trying to figure out. I almost think the right thing to do here is make our compiler not use the VPF register arguments. We pulled those flags off of uh, off of what Arduino was doing. So let's figure out. So then, but that doesn't mean that's what our tools are using or what our compiler is yeah. using. Or our library is using. There we go. ARM compilation error, VPF register is used by executable. Now, if you're not a regular embedded developer, folks, uh, what you're seeing here is what, uh, we're what's called, Butch and I are what's called principal developers, which is a lot like a senior <laughs> developer, but with more gray in their beard. Uh, and this is what we do. We, <laughs> I don't know this, but somebody else figured it out. They're smarter than me. Hey, we love Stack Overflow. Yeah, Stack Overflow goes down. We're all out, out jobs. A lot of uncomfortable truth about that, that old joke. Flow ABI equals soft. Something's using soft. I kind of want it. We've got a we've got a hard floating point uh, unit on this thing. I'd kind of like to use it.
you know, I'll bet if we gave the right flags to New Lib, to our linker, we could get a hard floating point, New Lib. That looks promising. Yep. This up here was the accepted answer. It's just not the answer I like. I want to use I want to use the hard float API. All right, let's go back and check our compile flags. And there aren't any comments there saying that that second answer was totally off the mark. So. Nobody, well, you have float ABI hard there on line 57. Yeah, it could be my new ABI doesn't, my new lib doesn't support hard ABI. But that, that can't be right. What's that flag again? Float ABI equals hard. Wow, well, nothing here looks really promising. I'm guessing you're in the browser window there. I am sorry. I. Yes. This is all deep diving stuff up here. I wonder if we could give the linker a flag about that. Oh, like we did. <laughs> okay, so we gave this flag to the linker. But what if we didn't give that to our C flags? Nope. Gave that to the C flags, too. And you're back in the code now, right? Yep. This, <laughs> this folks, is why we have a pair partner <laughs> and why I've shared my screen with him. Because when Butch hasn't been here, I've gone 20 minutes talking about a screen that nobody can see. Let's say the viewership on those particular videos wasn't that great. A lot of early drop off. All right, so we're telling it to use a, a hard floating point up there. Darn, that is not the answer I wanted. I really wanted that linker to go and get me the Hard floating point new lib. I'll tell you what, this is a great opportunity to go see Let's go see what's in New Lib and see if there in fact is something down here with hard floating point. V5TE doesn't look promising, but I might as well explore. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There's a libc down there. So what does V5TE stand for, you think? Uh, I'm not certain. Can't hurt to give it a try, though, right? You know, the worst, the worst it does is blow up, throw a bunch of error messages at us, and we've already got that going on. Yep.
Oh, that seemed to make it happier. Awesome. Still couldn't find a reset handler. That's probably a, an issue. But the map file will tell us for sure. We got past the other problem, though. There aren't, there aren't errors here. Sweet. All right. So this file will tell us kind of the things we want to know. I don't need to open it in the command line. It just occurred to me we can see our build folder here. Don't want that. I want this. There's our memory map. And I don't know. I haven't had a look for this in a long time where my interrupt vec vectors are. And if there's anybody out there listening who knows how to find your interrupt vectors out of the uh, map file, feel free to chime in. We won't. We won't be offended that you knew more than us. Also, low bar. Yeah. I've had to dig through this exactly once. But if you flash a board and nothing happens when you power it up or when you reset it, that's often a sign that you didn't get your interrupt vectors right. And that's when you start having to pay attention to those things. Guess how I know. I got a section coming up here that looks promising. There we go, memory configuration. Flash RAM, all right. Linker scripts and memory map. It's gonna come out happier. Well, it linked in, look at that, it linked in all our library stuff, so that's good. So the link happened. Ooh. Oh, no, that's constructors. Got constructors and destructors, though. You know what that tells you? It knows how to turn on a C and C++. Yeah. Always good. Fortunately, we, are, we already knew that the NRF boards were uh, C++ friendly. Yeah. Uh, anything that's supported by Arduino, for those out in the audience, anything supported by Arduino is C++ friendly. Uh, but not, especially ARM boards. A lot of ARM boards are not C++ friendly, and you have to... Come up with your own memory maps. Because if you put your constructors and destructors in the wrong part of memory, they will not be available when you when your program tries to launch, and nothing will happen. All right, I don't know what all this is. This is. Oh, okay. This is them saying, here's how we got to where we are. There's our GCC library. There's our libc. Our Gnosis library. And again, anybody with information about how to figure out where my interrupt vectors are, Lots of debug info. Oh, there's a lot more to go here. <laughs> Full of lines about comments. Wow, I don't care. Watch, that's where the important information is hiding. Well, you know what?
I say it's time to give this thing a shot. See what happens. Well, no, it worked because the light on the camera, or the, I'm sorry, the light on the device. So I get that whole thing into frame. I keep nudging it and it goes out of frame. Uh, that, you can see that little orange blinking light there. And if I get this wrong. Will that stop blinking? It'll stop blinking. So let's do a make flash. Apparently, that's not one of the commands we built in with our tool chain. That's disappointing. Ah, flash, flash blink. Okay. Or Bluetooth toy. Make flash Bluetooth toy. Suddenly I regret carving, giving it such a long name. All right, so that didn't get us everything we might have wanted. All right, so we need to go back. So somewhere there's a typo or something not defined. <clears throat> Is it? It's this right here. Something was defined wrong. Now we got further. Ah, we don't have any way to make Bluetooth toy that X. Wait. Ah, I need to make flash Bluetooth toy dot hex. Okay. And because I can't spell, I spell the flag. <laughs> Oh, it did not. It did not like what I told it there. Uh, no, it did not care for that one bit. All right, so we just give it the wrong path to that. That's okay. We know about that now. So, so at what point did you make your zip file? Uh, that was a target we made already. Mm. I don't see. No, we I don't see a zip file. We didn't make it. Okay. So what do you have to put in that zip file? You know, this is one of those mysteries out of the Arduino output that I need to decipher. Uh, it's a zip of something in the package. I don't know if it's a zip of the hex file or of the the ELF itself. All right, we give it the gen package command. Yeah, it's a zip of the hex file. Hex files are input, package files are output. Okay. So we need to make the output of, or the dependency of this be package file.
We get much further before getting told to knock it off. So the file still doesn't exist. Oh, but it does exist. I wonder if that could have been a timing issue. Something's something's looking for it in but it isn't source, okay. Um yeah, wonder. Let's try if I run this again, does it find the file and say, Oh great, I got it? Nope. Okay, so the other thing that might be going on is that we are um, So you CD into the source, and then you try to give it a package path that is source. Yeah. That doesn't seem quite right. Uh, we aren't CDing into source, though. Right there below 50% generating and flash Bluetooth we... test, oh. it says C Fascinating. Oh, uh, you know what? This PKG file needs for certain a. It depends on a hex file. Yeah, you're right. We're, we see the end of that. In fact, that's why all that other stuff up there works without needing specialness. So let's try it. It tried it. <laughs> I mean, we got we got issues. Yeah. It tried to talk to your to your port though, and. Could not have, or to the device. It actually got to the device, and the device didn't respond. You know, there's a possibility here. It's worth considering. I have a new USB uh, hub. Yeah. It's a really neat and special hub, but it often loses connection to devices <laughs> when it gets when the computer's been off for a while. I have to reseat stuff for the computer to find it. So let's try that again. Nope. It's not having it. So so now we don't know if that's because it couldn't find it on your port or because that reset handler address is wrong and is getting in the way. Yeah, or this option highlighted right here it might have an incompatible bootloader. That's an Arduino bootloader on there. Hmm. That is not a uh, Nordic bootloader. Okay. <laughs> so that could be an issue. <laughs> All right. We've so... been this for about an hour here. But yeah, go ahead. What's your question? I was going to say that might require us at least as an interim step to exploring using the Adafruit tool to, to do that. Yeah, we're building. until we figure out till we had till we figure out how to get the right bootloader on there. Yeah, we're uploading it with the Adafruit bootloader though. Oh, maybe that's not an Adafruit image. Maybe that's one I built with Nordic. Hmm. That's a possibility. The other thing worth investigating is are there J JTAG headers on there? I don't, I don't see them. Usually JTAG headers stick up real prominently, but they can be present. It's just not, you know, exposed, but not headers installed. Uh, because this is designed for wearables, and those pins are getting in the way. That's worth, that's worth investigating. I got, you know, I got three pads on the back there. I see those. Those look real promising for uh, for JTAG pins. So we should make ourselves a note so that when we come back, we know what we need to poke around on. 
Yep, you know what? I got a piece of paper right here on the desk. <laughs> All right. So I just realized I had that off screen, folks. But if you look there, those three little dots, kind of conspicuous back there. That's not really how this device is set up to connect to something like that. So it could be that those are uh, JTAG pins. And if you're not familiar, JTAG pin is the... JTAG is the sort of really low-level way to get your code onto the device. And it's not fast. It's not as fast as usually the bootloaders are, but it is effective. And effective is good. So we're going to have to check into that. But we're at an hour here. And so I think we need to do a little experiment with this device to see what's involved in getting code to it. The other option is that I've just got the port wrong. You know what? Let's just go see if that port even exists. While I'm still here. Oh, that, that port's there. That's a promising sign that it actually knows about the device. So we're going to conduct a little experiment. Let me pull that out. And now let's see, is that device still there? Not there. Okay. So the device is connected. That is its proper name. So that's actually kind of promising. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So we have we have progress and we have a direction to go for the, the next steps. Yep. You know, people watching this are going to take one look and say, you know, this embedded development is insane and it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I do promise you it's not normal. It doesn't have to be this hard. We have chosen deliberately to take the uh, – there's a, there's a well-paved road. Uh, clearly marked out, and we have chosen that through the through the tag elders. Really, how we want to do this? Uh, we, yeah, we are definitely out in the tag elder here. So I'll bet that. Yeah, we're gonna have to learn. The good the, the good news is there's lots of interesting stuff out there, and once we get cut through it, we'll be able to uh, to explore lots of lots of fun things and quickly and easily and yeah, repeatably and. Automotive, automatedly, I'll come up with other words for that. <laughs> yeah, one of the one of the really great things about using, I don't want to, I don't mean to run down the Arduino ecosystem here, which has an awful lot of really great stuff in it. But when you can start using the chip manufacturer's native SDK, uh, you get access to a lot more things than necessarily the Arduino community can get for you. So uh, that's kind of our motivation here is we want to play with all the fun little toys. But with that... And definitely, definitely the Arduino community and the other things like that, Circuit Playground and um, uh, their connections with Scratch are, are great ways to get people introduced to the very surface and beginning of exploring, making things with little bits of hardware and stuff. Yeah, um, in fact... In fact, after we after we take our trip through the tag elder here uh, and get a working app on here, we should probably show folks, hey, you could have just used Arduino and this would have been solved. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch would be yeah, right. Then we, and then we have to then we'll need to talk about the trade offs of, of why we would why we put ourselves through this of going through the Briar Patch and other places to get to the, the really sweet berries. Yep. Yeah, there were there were definitely there was a raspberry patch or two in here too. All right, folks, thanks for sticking with us, uh, both of you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Good night. Bye. Bye.